Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be here and to see all of you here this morning as we come together to celebrate and commemorate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this first Sunday of Advent. So, great seeing you here. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. And now we will have our grounding moment. Come now, O God, when our love is forsaken. Come, when our bedrock of faith has been shaken. Come, when when our deepest of hopes are mistaken. Come, Emmanuel, come, Emmanuel. Come, when we squander the freedom you gave us. Come, break the systems of sin. Excuse me, that enslave us. Come, though we wonder if you could still save us. Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Come, put an end to our self serving madness. Come, while the world is enshrouded in sadness. Come, turn the tears of our mourning to gladness. Come, Emmanuel. Come, Emmanuel. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, uh, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgive us, forgives our sins, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart, and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit, and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, So far, God removes sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. And now we will sing our gathering song, um, Blessed Be the God of Israel.
Is that better? Yes. I'm so sorry. You are a very good reader. When you put a lion together with a little bunny, which one is going to be taking charge? What do you think? Is the bunny going to take charge of the lion? Or is the lion going to be bigger and take charge of the little bunny? Who's going to be in charge? Probably the lion. Yeah, probably the lion. But in the story you read, God says there's going to be a time when bunnies or lambs and lions will all be equal. That's pretty neat. That no one is too small, no one is too big in our animals or in our families or in our world. And we will all live in peace. And now we're going to have a little bit of, an, of a little litany. So we'll go to the next slide. And we're going to do this. Um, wake up, sleepy Christians. The night is over. Be up and awake. See what God is doing. We can't wait a minute. We must be up and out. Amen. So let's see what happens next week. You've got your Spark Bibles at home. You can read the stories all over again. So we lit one candle now. What do you think for next week? You think two? Yeah, you're right. It's two. It's a spoiler alert, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have one prayer to say together. God, our hope, we watch and wait for you. Wake us up to see the signs of your coming glory. Amen. You may go back to your places. Thank you for the light. Light makes a lot of difference. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray together. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading from Habakkuk today comes from a translation called The Message. It's a contemporary version, and listen with your ears. I think you'll hear things that are familiar. Good morning. The reading today is uh, selections from the prophet or from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. The problem is God gave Habakkuk to see it. God, how long do I have to cry out for help before you listen? How many times do I have to yell help, murder, police before you come to the rescue? Why do you force me to look at evil? stare trouble in the face day after day. Anarchy and violence break out, quarrels and fights all over the place. Law and order fall to pieces. Justice is a joke. The wicked have the righteous hamstrung and stand justice on its head. God says, look. Look around at all the godless nations. Look long and hard. Brace yourself for a shock. Something's about to take place, and you're going to find it hard to believe. I'm about to raise up Babylonians to punish you. Babylonians, fierce and ferocious. World-conquering Babylon, grabbing up nations left and right. A dreadful and terrible people, making up its own rules as it goes. What's God going to say to my questions? I'm braced for the worst. 
I'll climb to the lookout tower and scan the horizon. I'll wait to see what God says and how he'll answer my complaint. And then God answered, write this. Write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. This vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait, and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. Look at that man, bloated by self-importance, full of himself, but soul empty. But the person in right standing before God through loyal and steady believing is fully alive, really alive. God's on his way again, retracing the old salvation route. Coming up from the south through Taman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Skies are blazing with his splendor, his praises sounding through the earth, his cloud brightness like dawn, exploding, spreading, forked lightning shooting from his hand. What power is hidden in that fist? Plague marches before him, pestilence at his heels. He stops, he shakes earth, he looks around, nations tremble. The age-old mountains fall to pieces. Ancient hills collapse like a spent balloon. The paths God takes are older than the oldest mountains and hills. Though the cherry trees don't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields stunted, though the sheep pens are sheepless and the cattle barns empty, I'm singing joyful praise to God I'm turning cartwheels of joy to my Savior God. Counting on God's rule to prevail, I take heart and gain strength. I run like a deer. I feel like I'm king of the mountain. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. The Gospel is written in the 26th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 36th verse. Glory to you, Lord. Then Jesus took his disciples with him to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. Then he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here, stay awake with me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask that you fill us with the power of our spirit, that every word today might be your word of truth, and by that same spirit, open our hearts to your mercy and grace. Amen. We have a story today with a little-known prophet. You can read the whole thing in a very short time, the whole book of the Bible only has three chapters. So if you get asked in confirmation to read something from the Bible and read the whole chapter, Habakkuk is a good choice. A little bit better than Matthew, which has more than 28. <laughs> now in this particular book, Habakkuk is a prophet. But most of the time, the prophets have the word of God that they need to speak in order to talk to the people. We've heard 
Jeremiah and Isaiah, Ezekiel, so many of them, where God is speaking and talking to the people and saying, why don't you get on the right track? Can't you do better in your daily lives? Remember the faith. Don't keep going into these paths of temptation. Get back in a place of a real relationship with me, with God. But Habakkuk is different. Instead of taking God's words and telling us, Habakkuk takes our questions and feeds them at God. Have you ever been frustrated in your life? Yeah. Have you ever even thought, maybe in the back of your mind, that you'd like to get angry with God and say, why? Maybe you have. Maybe your grief in times of hurt, maybe your fear in times of want, have caused you to have questions that you hardly dare even form in your mind. Well, Habakkuk is the prophet you need to read because he takes all of those questions and boldly fires them back at God. He saw in his day, and it sounds a lot like what we see in the world now, Habakkuk saw a lot of political problems. He saw big countries swallowing up little ones, and surprising things were happening. Egypt, which had long been for hundreds of centuries the primary power in the Middle East was almost overnight swept under by little Assyria, who was power hungry and grabbing. Now you've got, Elizabeth, you've got Israel right in the middle of that. Israel's up here, Egypt's over here. So for Assyria to get to Egypt, right through Israel. And if Egypt wants to go to battle back with Assyria, right back through Israel. So the prophet is looking at all the things that are going wrong with all of these enemies that are riling up their country. These people are wicked. They're ferocious. They cause suffering just for the sake of suffering. And finally, when Assyria falls and their capital, Nineveh, falls, who knows where Nineveh is today? Anybody got an idea? where Nineveh is today? I don't either. <laughs> Nobody else does either. The whole idea was that when Nineveh fell, the country fell, and it was to be forgotten. No more Nineveh, forever. We don't know where it was. Now, with Assyria down, the forces of Babylon are starting to stir up. They're starting to get hungry for power and countries and land and people. And they start going from the place that is Iran today, across Syria, back across Israel, over to Egypt, and they're conquering peoples all along the way. And there is nothing but suffering and then the people of Israel themselves, so full of sin and suffering that they have forgotten what it's like to be a people of God. They have done some things that have been totally ignoring their relationship with God. They did not observe the Sabbath. They did not know the books of the Torah. They just simply went on seven days a week with their life as if God was just going to be there and take care of them like they always was. And they would be protected when the time comes, even if they did nothing. Well, they found that the Babylonians coming, that something was going to be different. So Habakkuk takes the questions that he sees, and he says, God, how come you're indifferent when all this evil and wickedness is around us and you don't see very near, I can't find where you are. We don't know where you are. And the other question he asked, 
Why do wicked and evil people seem to go unpunished all the time? And the people who are righteous and innocent seem to hurt. Ever ask those kinds of questions? We have. Too many times. So he bombards God boldly with these questions and he expects God to answer. So the first thing I want you to remember when you go out of here today is that when you bring your questions to God, expect an answer. God will give it to you. Now one of the ways that God gives answers is, is in a worship setting. That is one of the reasons we come to church. It is in the reading of scripture. There are answers in the ways that God is and who God is with his people that are so enriching in the scripture. And I bet most of us use those kinds of things pretty regularly. Have you ever opened the Bible in a time of need to whatever random place and think, is there an answer here to my question? We sometimes do that. It's not the best way to find an answer, however. We ask for questions in prayer. But we don't always find the answers because sometimes we are impatient. We have the questions up to God and then we walk away. We need to wait and listen. And listen for the ways that God talks to you with a word of knowledge or a word of hope. Now God does talk to us that way. I'm reminded of a story of a missionary couple who made their living by going from church to church, telling the good news of Jesus Christ. And when they had left the last church that they were in, they were heading down the road, and it didn't look like there was a very big offering that time. So the husband asks the wife, how much money do we have to get to the new church? And she counted up everything that they had. And all they had was $5.47. Well, she said, we could get a snack, and that would get us through till the evening, probably. But it won't get us gas in the car in order to get there. And they didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't know how this problem was going to be resolved. But they prayed, and they decided it's time to wait and listen. We trust God, and somehow there must be an answer. God will not abandon us. That's when the fear started, because a great big semi-truck with a burly-looking driver behind them started blinking his lights at them. And they were a little wondering, what's that all about? And the driver got really close to the car. And the missionary sped up a little bit more. And the truck got a little closer again. And he was blinking the lights. And he was kind of looking at them, wearing. And he's pushing his arms. What's going on? What's the matter? The man started to slow down. This time, the semi-truck passed him and more motions, pull over, pull over, pull over. And he got in front of the car and just barely got to the road and it pushed them off to the side. New prayers of fear came after them, as it might. And this big driver got out of the car, out of the truck. He came down over to the car. He said, roll down your window. Here, I've got a $20 bill. That's all I've got but it's yours. I've been hearing this voice in my head that says the car in front of me needs $20. I don't know why. I don't know what it's about, but here. <laughs> and then he went back to his truck and went on his way. God listens. God puts people in our lives that we don't even know about. And if you hear him asking, Give that car in front of you $20, you better do it. 
It is all about listening for that word of God, like the truck driver did. He could have just gone right on along. What was that, something I ate for breakfast? But he listened. And so it is like Habakkuk. He put all of his questions boldly before God. And then he got to the watchtower, the highest place around. And he started to look and listen and wait. Now let's fast forward just a little bit to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is bringing his disciples there. It is the night in which he is betrayed. We know the whole story. He will be betrayed by Judas. He will be arrested, tried, crucified, put in a tomb, all in the next 24 hours. But he says to his disciples, watch and wait with me. Now it's very early in the morning, probably two or three o'clock. They've had a very busy day. And as they go, Jesus is agitated, he's disturbed, he brings his questions to God. If it's possible, can I not drink this cup? But he listens and he waits. And he turns back to see his disciples and you know what they're doing? They're not listening. They're not waiting. They're sleeping. It is just too much. And they fell asleep. And Jesus wakes them up. He says, can't you just stay awake a little bit with me and pray with me? And Jesus goes back to his prayer. And the disciples now, invigorated by what Jesus said, but tired from the day, what do they do? They fall asleep again. Again and again, we're like those apostles. In the times when it's most necessary, sometimes our bodies betray us and all we can do is sleep. Habakkuk, however, is looking. He's looking from this highest place he can get. He's ready to hear the word of God. He's ready to take that word of God and the answers to the people around him. And he's at a place where he can both listen and deliver. Where's your watchtower? Everybody's got one. A place where you can listen, a place where you know you can put things into action, a place where you can hear the word of God. I hope you know where it is, that quiet place of prayer, that place where you're alert and patiently waiting. This passage in Habakkuk says, the righteous live by faith. In the translation we had today, it was those who have a really right relationship with God are always present with God. And they're alive. They're really alive. So Habakkuk gets this word that the righteous, those people who are right with God, who are listening, who are patient, who are looking for that word of God, will live by their faith because we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow or the next day or the day after. We're asking God questions because we don't know the answers. And we hope that there will be an answer that will bring us peace and change and transformation. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Habakkuk hears it. He hears the word. And God says, well, you're asking the question about who will punish the evildoers and why aren't the evildoers, go, why are the evildoers going unpunished? And why do the righteous suffer so much? The answer, Habakkuk, is they don't. Not in God's time. You have to remember that God's timing is always 
perfect. If Jesus had gotten an answer, oh, you don't have to go to the cross. We'll try to do this some other way. But there was no other way. God himself died for our sins once and forever and all. And without that death to sin, we would be incomplete. We would still have those smudges of things that prevent us from having a real relationship with God. Sometimes we have to go through the suffering things in order to find our way to that real relationship with God. That happened for the people of Israel. They had gone so far away that when Babylon came and actually crushed Jerusalem, they tore down the temple, they tore down the walls, it was devastation. But how many know where Jerusalem is today? If you could look at a map, you can find it, right? Sure. It is not forgotten. It is still there. God has protected the people and the city. And from their exile time of some 70 years in Babylon, the people of Israel came together and they formed a community of faith. And they learned again how to pray and how to read the Torah and how to worship on the Sabbath. And all of the things, the arts and practices of keeping them close to God became so important that when they came back home, they revived the country, they revived the people, and it is still growing today. God teaches us in all kinds of ways. Habakkuk discovered God would come after all. It would all be done in his timing. And so Habakkuk then started shouting for joy. Now, the world hadn't changed. That's important to look at. The world hadn't changed at all for Habakkuk. What changed was God's image to Habakkuk that changed. He suddenly realized how big God was, who comes again from Egypt and across from the south and wipes away all of the problems. God who shakes the mountains, God who makes the lion and the lamb lie down together. And Habakkuk says, Lord, I've heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Redo them in our day, please. In our time, make them known. And in times of wrath, remember mercy. Our prayer today is that we ask God to listen to our questions and we wait and we wait patiently for God to answer them and we find a place of renewal in the waiting when all things will be made new and God will keep us in faith. We live by that faith day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, form us into your faithful people and renew us in our waiting. Keep us always close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us sing our next song, Awake, Awake.
And now I will invite you all, uh, if you are able to please arise as we state our affirmation of faith. We believe in a God who promised blessings to Abraham and Sarah, who wrestled with Jacob, who walked with Ruth, who spoke with Moses, who grieved with Bathsheba, who danced with David, and watched like Habakkuk, who dreamed like Joseph, and who hoped like Mary. We believe in a God who is loving, transformed, and challenging us from generation to generation. And we believe that the same God is here with us now, saying, be alert, make faith your way of life, watch and wait. Amen. And now I invite you all to pray as we pray the prayers of the church. And the congregational response will be to God of creation, God of salvation. Hear the prayer of our hearts. As we pray, you may, you may all be seated. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. We pray firstly for those closest to us, our immediate family and closest friends, for their health, needs, joys, and fears. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayer of our hearts. We pray for our extended family and friends who we might not see each week, for their, for their love and concern, for their well-being. And we pray especially for Jim Groff, Connie Coble, Todd Moore, Dick and Jerry Webster, Linda Steffens, Dottie Leibold, Julie Rose, Judy Rose, and Pastor Jolene. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayer of our hearts. As the ripples reach out towards the land, we pray for those who we only have contact with annually or less for a blessing this Advent time. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayer of our hearts. As the ripples reach their furthest point, we pray for this world and its people, for the needs of this week and the future. God of creation, God of salvation, Hear the prayer, prayer of our, our hearts. And now, um, the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And now I invite you to turn towards your neighbor and share a sign of Christ's love and peace to one another. God's peace. God's peace. <coughs> God's peace to you all. It is a joy to be here. It is, as all of you have probably read and know, uh, I am preparing for a re full-time retirement. Um, I retired once when cancer hit the second time, and I came here part-time. And as you know, I'm not here every day of the week. But it is time for me, I've heard God's voice, for me to stop working full time, and for you to be able to have some new uh, talent and some new people here. These years have been fantastic for me, and I have experienced the love of God in profound ways. So I am very glad that, these, that I've had this opportunity with you. I'll still have one more time of preaching yet with you uh, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, and it is a blessing. Thank you all. 
And uh, some notes from, the, from Pastor Jolene's family. I got an email that, uh, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, she is doing well, but tired. And James, do you want to say anything in particular? I know I'm putting you on the spot again. <laughs> he knows I do this. <laughs> She will be here next week, she thinks, and next week is lessons and carols. So we are excited with the way Elliot and the choir and uh, all of the people around have been putting together an extraordinary piece of music and bells, all kinds of things. So be sure to come. It is not a sermon Sunday, but it is a Sunday of growth and beauty and wonderful music. So please. Make it a point to come and bring your friends. There are also announcements in your bulletin that are included for Bluff Country singers, for bell ringers, for cookie bakers, for the uh, Christmas dinner. If you wish a poinsettia in the, uh, to decorate our altar, there's a coupon there that you can put in the uh, offering plate and, uh, or let Amber know in the office and we'll be glad to have a sea of poinsettias to also grace our altar. Are there any other announcements that I've missed? Thank you. That's right. Love lights a tree at five o'clock today, and that's at First English. The tourist information, the former. Got it. Thank you. And our youth are involved in that, so it is a it is a beautiful thing to see. Thank you. And so with that, we will be bringing our offering forward and our offering song, uh, two verses of In the Bleak Midwinter. Please join me in the offering prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours with your Amen. This is the time when we share the table of great communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that at all times and in all places we give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new. 
in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. stand as you are able. We praise you all, holy God, for the universe beyond our knowing, for family, strangers, and friends. We praise you for your covenant people and for centuries of faithful Christians. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, who on the night before he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink. It said, this covenant is my blood given for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for your Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. We pray for you all, Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, today, tomorrow, and forever. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be and see that the Lord is good. You are welcome to communion. You may be seated. <coughs> Please come forward at the direction of the ashes.
body Christ. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in his grace now and forevermore let us pray we thank you O God that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation shine the light of Christ on our path that we may do justice love kindness and walk humbly with you now and forever amen the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our closing song is a new one. You will catch it very quickly. And we're going to sing, it goes quickly, we'll sing three verses only. They're, they're going to be short. The melody line keeps repeating. It's a Marty Hogan, so we've sung a lot of his music. I think you'll catch it on as you go along. And if the kids want to come up for musical instruments, come on up. We've got them. Zach, can you help get them out? We've got shakers. We've got all kinds of things. Yeah, let's good make some noise. Oh, 
Thank you. 